Come on, let's just clap our hands and thank God one more time for the great things that God has done. Second Corinthians, I'm sorry, second to Peter. We're going to go from second Peter today to help ground our continued journey through Pentecost and also highlight this great emphasis on graduation Sunday. I continue to be reminded that at its core, life with Jesus is about formation. It is about us going from glory to glory, from one level to another level, from one place of revelation, knowledge, and wisdom to another. Our life with God should be a life that is vibrant. It should be a life that tickles your imagination and catalyzes your intellect. You need not be a person of faith and be anti-knowledge. Amen. You need not be a person who follows the transcendent one and be someone who is threatened by science and by history and by the disciplines that at its core flow from the overwhelming wisdom of God. It is and should be worth saying that uh, the scripture reminds us over and over again that God is our source and that all good things, they come from above. And I have found that a life of following the ways of Jesus, although they offer to us circumstances that we often cannot give language to, they always offer us an opportunity to lean in to the God of all knowledge and wisdom and get some revelation. Anybody ever been walking through seasons of your life and when you started one season, you didn't have the information you needed in order to make it through. But the more you journeyed through your destination or through your journey and you arrived to your destination, you came out on the other side with a revelation. Anybody ever had a revelation from God? God turned a light on. It was like, uh, you know, I... I, I, I didn't know that God was able to handle this part of my life. But when God does a thing, all the information that God provides and introduces us to along the way, it helps us, I believe, to grow and to take the next step. And that's one of the things I want to offer to us today, that no matter where we are on our journey, you ought to be willing and able to take the next step and not be content on where you are, knowing that there is more that God wants from you pertaining to that which God has placed in you. God wants more from you pertaining to that which God has placed in you. And therein leads us to 2 Peter chapter number one, verse number three. Certainly, as we are some weeks, a couple weeks away from Pentecost Sunday, we're going to continue to keep teasing out this idea that God has put something in us that is only through the power of God's spirit able to be maximized. I mean, I do believe that for some of us, uh, we are naturally skilled and gifted and without a lot of effort, we can be particularly successful in certain kind of ways. But I also believe that there's something in you that only the Holy Spirit can activate fully. And I want you to understand, child of God, that uh, whatever, wherever, however your life has brought you to this point, God can always activate something in you. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Here we go. Second Peter chapter number one, verse three, it says God's divine power has given us everything. Somebody say everything. Everything, everything needed for life and godliness. Mm -hmm. Not life or godliness. 
but life, everybody say, and godliness. Listen, through the knowledge of him who called us by God's own glory and goodness. So not glory or goodness, but glory and goodness. There's something about and in this passage that I just want you to keep focusing in on, right? Verse number four, thus God has given us through these things his precious and very great promises so that through them you may escape from the corruption that is in the world because of lust and become participants of God's divine nature. If I had, you know, old school, all day, uh, spend all day in church kind of church, I, 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 I'd, I'd try to preach this whole passage. I'm, I'm not going to preach it all, but I'm going to keep reading, though, praise God. Verse number five says, for this very reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness. And mm -hmm, some of y'all, all right, y'all making preaching easy this morning. And goodness with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with endurance and mm -hmm, endurance with godliness and godliness with mutual affection and mutual affection with love. There's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of ands going on, praise God. I, I'm, I'm going to read one more scripture because I know we don't want to be here all day. Verse number eight, listen, for if these things are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For anyone who lacks these things is short-sighted and blind and is forgetful of the cleansing of past sins. Therefore, brothers and sisters, be all the more eager to confirm your call and election. For if you do this, you will never stumble. It's the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. So I, I, I want you to, to I, I was just going to call the name of this sermon and, but I feel like y'all wouldn't remember what we was talking about. So we're going to call it today. There's levels to this. There are levels to this. Come on and pray with us as we invite God's spirit among us. God, we want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word of God that we have read for the people of God. We ask you to hide your word in our heart so we will not sin against you. And as I stand to preach, please send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. May it rest upon me and the hearers of your word. And we'll say thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of the Lord say amen. amen. There's levels to this. Now, I remember... Uh, one of my seminary professors when I was in graduate school, he always used to tell us at the beginning of his courses, particularly the beginning of the semester, at the end of the semester, he would say, whatever you do in your journey of learning, make sure you always maintain the learning and the burning, the fire and the focus the keen mind and the clean life. The learning and the burning, the fire and the focus, the keen mind and the clean life. I already mentioned to the graduates, and certainly I'll say it again to all of us who are here, that Jesus taught his disciples that we ought to love the Lord God with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our soul or spirit and our neighbors as ourselves. You see, the life 
journey with Jesus is not about a series of one-offs where you just get to have this singular experience with God that leads to a period when God's work in us is always a series of commas, semicolons. I don't know how many, you know, uh, language folks we got in here, people who got good grades in English, understand the, the use of, of punctuation marks. I was not always very good at understanding how to end a sentence, and even still today, uh, when I have to write op-eds or when I'm writing, you know, memos to my staff, uh, my comms team, they always tell me, Pastor Mike, you're trying to fit too many ideas in one sentence. Put a period there. Start a new <laughs> statement. I don't know if that's just, you know, this revelation that God placed in me at a young age that we got too many periods where God is trying to put commas. God's trying to put semicolons, meaning that this is not the end. This is just a pause. It's an opportunity for you to reflect on what you just heard, what you just endured, and now you got to keep on going. Now, you know, all you who are moving from one level of education, I mean, you know, we, 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 we celebrating our PhDs, praise God, and our masters. Don't listen to me on your grammar stuff, amen. I you follow your, <laughs> follow your TAs and your, 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 your dissertation committees, amen, because listen to Pastor Mike with your commas and periods, you may still be in school for a little longer. But I want to invite you to consider my advice in your spiritual journey. That God is always working on you. God is never finished with you. As a matter of fact, as long as you got breath in your body, you are constantly in God's hands being formed into the image and the likeness of God. And your journey, our journey towards God's perfection or perfected ideal of us is constantly being teased out through life experiences, through acquired wisdom, knowledge, and information, by the fellowship of the saints, by the disciplines of our faith, that God is always adding to you. And this idea that God is adding to you must also cause you to appreciate the importance of being open to God's addition. That God wants you to know that you have divine power that is giving you everything you need for life and godliness. This idea that God does not just give you the power you need for life the ability to make money on your job, the ability for you to matriculate through research one, two, three level institutions, the ability for you to have promotions in your workplace. But there are other things that God wants to add to your life. That's why God says, and godliness. That life and godliness go together that life and godliness are compatible with one another, that God's activity in your life is not an either or, it's a both and. You ought to pat yourself on the chest and say, God's work in my life is not an either or, it's a both and. That God is working in your life to achieve both and his purposes, that God does not start something to leave you undone, but God is always moving you from whatever you have today to the next level. 
Graduations and promotions are important because they remind us that if you start something, there is a stepping stone to another place. I want you to realize, child of God, that there is a graduation God is seeking to bring all of us to and through. God wants you to graduate in every level of life and godliness. God wants you, as the scripture says, to add to your faith goodness. Meaning that it is not enough for you to have faith if you can't be good to folk. Lord, have mercy. Now, this list, it'll mess with you if you let it, you see. Because all of us love to think that we are, you know, the standard for a Christian faith. You know, I like to think that from time to time when I'm comparing myself to the right wing, Christo fascist, evangelical uh, nationalist of this country. Oh, I love to feel good about myself. I, I, I be like, Lord, at least I'm not like them. Anybody ever pray that prayer, God? Hey, how many of us know we got our, the people we love to compare ourselves to? Oh, God, at least I'm not her. You see how she be? <laughs> You're like, God, I thank you. At least I'm not him. You see how he be getting? Oh, I thank you. But how many know there's a list in God's, you know, uh, 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 criteria that if you read it long enough, you're going to find yourself in need of God's end. Hello, somebody. Save me from the people that don't need God's hand. Lord, keep them folk out of my life who don't need God to keep adding to them wisdom and knowledge. Isn't it interesting that people who hate books love to be experts? Uh, how does that work? <laughs> when, when's the last book you read? Are you, uh, uh, does that include like a uh, 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 Vibe magazine and 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 you know a uh, 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 world star hip hop? You know, I, I be reading. That, does that that include Facebook posts? And no, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. And I'm not trying to be, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, someone who's 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 elitist. I'm just saying, if you're not reading much, you can't be an expert of much. Why? Because information comes through a discipline of learning, of acquiring information. Okay, some of you all that knows, I, 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 I'm, 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 I, there's t telepathic. Uh, energy in here. It's like, oh, Pastor Mike, I, I don't read. I listen to books. That's fine, but you ought to be do, uh, depending on some knowledge that is not your own. We found this to be so prevalent during COVID. People who had never went to a science class, I mean university, I mean got a degree, where were convinced they knew everything about a virus <laughs> that is the highest form of, of biological evolution we're aware of. Brother, you tell me, well, Pastor Mike, I saw it on YouTube. I said, really? So your degree comes from the University of YouTube. Well, God bless you. I bet you if you have a toothache, you won't go to the dentist who has their degree from the University of YouTube. I bet you if your car breaks down, you won't go to the mechanic who has a degree from the University of YouTube. So why would you put your life in the hands of a University of YouTube expert for a once in a generation virus that is killing folk all over the world. I understand if it was just harming folk here, you know, in your neighborhood, maybe that is a conspiracy theory. I said, but ain't nobody can impact the whole world on a conspiracy. Maybe there is wisdom 
and knowledge that is only acquired through a lifetime commitment to keeping the periods at play in your life. If we take the word of God seriously this morning, the scriptures give us that we ought to add faith or support our faith with goodness and goodness with knowledge and knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, endurance with godliness, godliness with mutual affection and mutual affection with love. My question for you and I today is very simple. Where are you and I being invited to take the next step in our life and godliness journey with God? Are we content to be excited about graduating from preschool? Well, I don't have to go to school no more. <laughs> preschool. Woo. That was that was that was that was a hard journey. <laughs> preschool. It, it put me through a lot. But you know, uh, I got my promotion exercise. I got my 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 I got a chance to wear my little hat and my little gown and they celebrated me. That's why, you know, I I've I've been called the, the graduation groucho uh in my you know, a little communal network, because I'm saying to myself, I was telling my mom at, at one, of, one of the kids' promotion exercises, I said, did we celebrate at every level like this? <laughs> Praise God. See, like, everybody's getting a big party, a party for preschool, a party for kindergarten, a party for elementary school, a party for, what's the next one? High school, middle school, a party for high school, a party for going to class, a party for, and, I, and I'm just saying, you know, is there not something we have to save as a major accomplishment to get you and I, uh, you know, looking forward to something and they all shut me down real fast. Said it's, it's worthy celebrating life along the way. Why? Because life can be hard. And you got to have some joy along the way. How many know that a life without joy is a life not lived well at all? That God wants you and I to find joy in our journey so we can keep having wells of strength to draw from as we keep going. But I am one of these folk who believe that God's divine power that gives us the power for life and godliness helps you and I to not be uh, 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 content to stay static when we are invited to be dynamic, to keep moving forward to keep making space for God to add to our lives, add to our journey, add to our development. And that is why I believe this passage is so powerful for us on a day like today, because there are levels to the ways and the places where God wants us to go. Some of us have figured out a good rhythm for how we develop our spiritual life and we've not done a good job figuring out how we develop our natural life. Conversely, some of us have figured out ways to develop our natural professional lives, but when it comes to the levels of spiritual fervor, we find ourselves stuck in a rut. But this is where I love the Pentecostal traditions uh, and even the larger traditions of the Christian faith because they give us disciplines that serve as a stepping stone where you and I can literally tap into the practices that make the ends in your life much more possible and vibrant. That just like going to class helps you to get a good grade by the end of the year, engaging in these disciplines help to cultivate spiritual power that can literally bleed and overflow into every other aspect of your life. Because if you are a person who has faith, but you have no goodness, your faith can be easily neutralized. 
If you are a person that has intellect but have no character, your intellect can be easily neutralized. If you are a person that has power but does not have love, your power can be easily abusive. God wants you and I to keep adding to what God has given us. Hallelujah. And right now, we have lots of disparate dissonance in the practices of our faith. We have lots of dissonance in the practices of our laws and, and, and the systems in our country. You have people who are loudly proclaiming, I follow Jesus, but seem to be okay killing folk who don't look like them. Then you have politicians who claim to love everybody and be inclusive of everybody, but govern in ways that exclude the most vulnerable. How can you, with your mouth, say you have these commitments, but with your actions demonstrate you have none? It is because some of us get stuck. We lean on the parts of us that do not rely on the discipline of continuous development. I mean, think of all the times where you, you survived on your natural talents. How many know what your natural talent is? It is a thing that you don't even have to work hard to, to actually, you know, pull off. Some of us got the natural talent of talking. <laughs> Yes, you know, some folk call it game, praise God. Some call it the gift of gab. Some, call it, some folk call it your hustle. I mean, you don't even got to work at it. It's wherever state you're in, you, you just, it just work. It, you don't even got to work at it. Some folk put it to good be or better use by, you know, making raps and rhymes or, or writing poems and novels. But, 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 but there are some character issues that if they are not fully exhausted and interrogated, your gift could become your curse. Whew. I don't know if you ever had a gift that became a curse. <laughs> so you're like, Lord, I wish I didn't have his gift. You ever said that one time in your life? Lord, I wish I, I, wish I wasn't so talented in this. This thing bringing more problems in a little bit. No, I've, I've had that a few times, amen. Where you like, God, I don't need this gift. <laughs> you know what God usually answers? God says, no, you, 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 you gonna have the gift for as long as you are alive. What you need is the end. You need to add to your gift the things that make your gift stay a gift. Hello, somebody. How many of us know that it's hard when you get used to moving in your natural gift and then you got to add some things to it to keep your natural gift from spiraling out of control? On a day like today when we talk about graduation, I want to invite you to celebrate the journey thus far, but ask God, Lord, what must I add yeah. Yeah. to my life so I can be a good steward over what you've placed in my hands? Because what good is it to have these levels of success when you are being knocked down because of your foibles, your idiosyncrasies, your weaknesses, your dispositions. God wants us to keep adding to it so we can keep taking the next step forward. That child of God is the message for today. Keep adding through God's spirit that which is required, why? Verse number four says, so we may become participants in God's divine nature. 
What does that mean? That means that yes, God could do a whole lot of stuff in the world and God does do a lot of things in the world without our input or our help. How many know that God's power sparks creation and creation runs without our help? The earth tilts and spins without you and I helping it. But how many of you know there are things happening inside the world that God is inviting you and I to be a partner with God? Not because God can't do it by God's self, but I believe that God is always helping you and I to reach for his divine nature through participating with God's activity in the world. And you have a special Unique call, a, a contribution that God is wanting to invite you to help God fix some problems. Help God solve some conundrums. Help God open some eyes and warm some hearts and remove some barriers. And when you participate with God's activity in the world, you begin to take on God's characteristics. You begin to learn how to be a person of mercy when you apply and extend mercy. You become a person of love when you apply and extend love. You become a person of holiness when you apply and extend holiness. You become a person of joy when you unleash joy and extend joy. You become a person of forgiveness when you forgive others and allow yourself to be forgiven. You become a person who can create something out of nothing uh, when you take in your hands uh, what God has placed in your hands uh, and say God it is because of your divine power it is because of your divine strength uh, that I can take this little bitty gift uh, that has got me from point A to point B uh, but I know that there is much more you're asking of me uh, so God help me uh, to take this gift that you've given me uh, help me uh, to add to this thing uh, that which you placed in my hands uh, may I add to my faith uh, good things and goodness uh, may I add to my goodness uh, knowledge with self control uh, may I add to my knowledge uh, endurance and godliness uh, and the more I add uh, the more like God uh, I can become uh, God's spirit uh, that lives in me uh, helps me to see those things that are not uh, as though they already are uh, I can be in a hellish condition uh, but I know that God uh, has put divine power in us uh, that you may see hell uh, but with the eyes of God uh, I see heaven uh, you may see defeat uh, but with the power of God uh, I see victory uh, you may see sickness uh, but with the power the power of God uh, I see healing uh, and when I can put my peace together uh, and you can put your peace together uh, and God puts God's addition in us uh, no weapon uh, that's formed against us uh, shall prosper uh, do I have somebody uh, that believes uh, that I got a level uh, I'm not reached yet uh, but I'm gonna keep stepping I'm gonna keep climbing uh, I'm gonna keep graduating uh, cause God he's with me somebody shout hallelujah come on stand with us on your feet everybody there are levels to this your education, your business, your relationship, your vocation, 
your academic career, your ministry, your personal journey with God. There are levels to this. And God invites all of us to make a decision, to, to, to literally say in my heart, I will not settle for periods when God is putting ands and commas in my life. Woo! Somebody ought to say, I thank God for the end. I thank God for the comma because it's just a reminder to me that God is not through with us yet. Grab the handle someone next to you if you don't mind and let's pray for one another. It's okay to go across the aisle, pray for one another. We are in need of God's continued addition in our lives. God, I need you. We need you. Every hour, we need you. Because we know that we can't do anything without you. We know that we are incomplete without your continued engagement and so I pray for the person whose hand I'm touching today I pray for the person who is near me today God you know what they have need of you know what strength is missing in their life you know where they're at the end of their rope and they need your help. They need your power. They need your strength. I pray today, God, that you will bless them. Give them, God, what they need for life and godliness. Heal their bodies, oh God. May they thirst after righteousness. Give them holy imagination for the papers they must write, the, the job they must have, the business they are launching, the relationships they are stewarding. May they lean into the levels, hallelujah, that are before them. And may they never grow tired of learning and having the burning. May they never grow tired of maintaining their fire along with this focus. And may they always, God, have a holy, clean life with a keen mind. And we'll say, thank you, bless them. Somebody say, bless my neighbor. Come on, say it again, heal my neighbor. Say it again, Lord, deliver my neighbor. Save my neighbor. In Jesus' name. Now lift those hands where you're standing. It's me, God, and I stand in the need of prayer. I come to you, God, in a way my neighbor cannot because I know that I need you. I need you, God, to show up for me, God. I need you, God, to mend my broken heart. I need you, God, to ease my troubled mind. I need you, God, to give me peace in the middle of this storm. So I call out to you, God, no other name that I know. Come and heal, come and deliver, come and set free. Do it in the name of Jesus. God, I receive you as my savior, as my deliverer. Come into my heart. Save me from my sins. Give me the salvation that has been so freely offered. And we'll say thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, two or three people are tell them there's levels to this. There's levels to this. There's levels to this. And I see God elevating you. I see God lifting you up. I see God helping you take the next step. There's levels. Levels, levels to this. Come on and give the Lord a hand. Praise everybody.